Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and today we're going to be taking a deeper look into my circular, fixed circular knitting needle storage box that I put together, as well as how I put together my little dividers here and what I meant when I said these are all facing towards the front or towards the back and this one is facing towards the front and why that was important. So here is my box. I will leave a link in the description box down below on Amazon. It is an affiliate link of where I purchased this. Uh, most of my needles, as I said in the original show and tell video where I shared that I'd put this together, are chow goo fixed circulars, red lace fixed circulars. I do have a couple like Haya Haya's, some Addies, some knit, uh, Knitter's Pride, things like that in here. But really, you can see how many red laces are in here. So when I picked my box, I picked one that was wide enough that the chow goo packaging just slipped right in. Uh, so I really was fitting it for this. Now I have, you know, over the years lost packets. This is the only red lace one I could find that I had lost, but I know there are more. The Haya Haya were about the same size. I think there's one that I've got. I think it's uh, the Likey Needle was the only one. Yeah. This is the only one where I had to bend back the packaging weird, but by and large, they all seem to fit this dimension. So like I said, the box will be in the description box. It is a nice magnetic closure box. It's one of the reasons why I chose it. And pink is not the only option. <laughs> so if you don't necessarily want to go for the mega girly floofy look. You don't have to. Okay, so I'm going to put you here on the stand. kind of wish I had a way to elevate this. Just try putting my sheep under here and see if that works. Okay. So, as you can tell, each one of these tabs is marked for the length of the needle that it is separating. The first section here is the nine inch circulars and those fall to the front. So this divider, I don't know if you can see where the bottom of this, no, you can't see that at all. Let's pull this out. So these dividers are all shaped in an L shape like this. The 9, 16, 24, and 32 inch all sit in the box with their flap going backwards. The 40 inch sits with its flap coming forwards. And that is specifically to keep everything upright when it's sitting flat. So this needed to have space from the edge. So it already had to go back, but every subsequent section, the, the weight was going to hold this upright. The weight on that flap would hold that upright. So just by having the nature of having this spaced away from the edge meant that we needed to have that going this way. For the 40 inch though, the reverse is true. Since this is the last divider in the box, we have space from the back of the box with my accessories that I have back here. But in order to keep this sitting upright in the box with the others, I needed to put this to where the needles were sitting on top of it so it didn't lean backwards or slide underneath the needles. And so it doesn't slide is actually why keeping this flap is important. But that's what I meant when I said the backs of all these, the bottoms of all these make an L to the back of the box, except for the last one, which makes an L shape towards the front of the box. So how I put 
the divider together is actually mega super duper simple. I'm going to be honest, 97% out of sheer laziness, this is so simple. Get you reconnoitered here. This, if you can't tell, is kind of a down and dirty, quick and easy video. Sip of water. Because once again, I'm finding myself talking way too much. Okay. So for my adhesive, I use dry adhesive. This is double stick tape from scrapbook.com, obviously. The cardboard, if you happen to have chipboard, that's great. These are actually recycled spacers from my cat food boxes. I get cases of wet cat food. And Fancy Feast separates the layers using this chipboard. It is incredibly thick. Really, really nice. I love it. So basically what I did, I, I took the width measurement of the box. So in this case, I just shaved the edge off just a little bit on the side here. But it was... The box is uh, just about eight and a half. So an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper was the perfect width. And this is just a 65 piece of, 65 pound piece of cardstock I had in my stash. So all I did was I took my dry adhesive off. That is a full sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line this up with the bottom here. I really should have done this in a different color other than black for the purpose of the camera here. But we're going to get that lined up on the bottom. You don't have to use dry adhesive. I just happen to have dry adhesive and it's easy. But you can see where I just got that lined up with the piece of cardstock there. I'm a little over. It's fine. It's not a big deal. We're going to take off the next side here. And you could do this, like I said, wet glue, dry glue, doesn't matter. You just wanted an adhesive that is really going to hold. So to flip this over, I create a crease. And then just drop this down. Bada bing, bada boom. And then to create that bottom L shape, I just fold it over the extra edge there and I'll trim this off since I've got it slightly slightly uneven there mostly because I'm looking through the camera to do this but that's all it is that's that's all I did to create the divider I just used my brother label maker to make a little label for the corner and that's all that is Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So if you're wanting to organize anything flat like that in a box, it's perfect. But for me, what I was looking for was the circular knitting needle storage. I did do them by the length of the cable. I have seen where people did it by the size of the needle. But to be honest, I'm more likely to be looking for a 9 inch one than a US one nine inch. I'm going to be looking for the length first, not the size. So anyway, that's how I built this. I really want to get this back in here before I forget and take all this back downstairs. And then I'm wondering where my needles are again, because believe it or not, that's already happened once. But yeah, so if you have any questions, leave them in the description box or the comment section down below. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if there's ever a project like this where you're a little bit more interested in what it was, even if it seems simple, you know, don't be afraid to ask. I really don't mind sharing, especially when it's this easy to share. I'm way over talking what it is that I did. <laughs> so anyway, I love you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful, fantastic Saturday. And I look forward to seeing you guys real soon.
Bye, you guys.